Welcome to day three of the TLYC sock challenge, working your sock wonders or your short circular needles. We're working down over the from the flap into the heel turn now. And what we're going to do is we're going to get ready to work the heel turn. So we finished the flap yesterday and now we're ready to turn on the short circular needles it can be a little bit fiddly, but it's worth it because you don't have to change needles. Um, what you're doing is you're coming down out from the bottom of your heel flap, turning around the bottom of your heel, um, and you're doing that using a technique called short rows. They're not, for people who are worried about wrap and turn short rows, they are not. They're just really easy short rows. So the first thing you're going to do, and this is work flat as well, only on the heel flap stitches that you've just done. So you knit across 15 stitches. It's about three quarters of the way across the heel flap. And that is following the largest, or sorry, that is following the smallest size pattern and the DK yarn. So if you want to, if you make a different size, you need to make sure you check the pattern, the heel flap and heel turn part of the pattern. So you're going to work across those 15 stitches. And when you come to that, you are going to do the next stitch as a slip slip knit. So that is slipping two stitches knit wise and then putting them back onto your left needle and knitting in through the back loops of those. And that creates a decrease on that side. And then you have going to turn your work. And on this side, then you have five of your unworked stitches. And they are fine. That is exactly how they're supposed to look. The next thing you're going to do is if you slip one purl wise, and then you purl across eight stitches. And that sets you up then because you're going across to the other side. Apologies are a little bit off screen here. We're just purling across the eight stitches. And then once you get to the other side, you are going to purl two stitches together. And this is this decrease on the other side of your heel flap, which matches the slip slip knit. So you've just purled those two stitches together and you have five unworked stitches on the left hand side as well now. So they correspond to those on the right. And that is really important because that means you are putting the heel turn in the center of your heel flap rather than veering off to the left or the right. It's unlikely that you will ever knit a sock where you don't at some point veer off. That is just that is just being a sock knitter. You just rip it out and start again. You just start the heel turn again. I wouldn't fudge it. <laughs> it's not as fudgeable as other things in knitting. So you slip one part wise with the yarn at back and then you knit across your eight. So something you may see in other patterns is knit back to one before the gap rather than having a specific stitch count. What that means is there's a little gap between the last stitch that's been worked and there's a gap between that and the unworked stitches. That's the gap they're talking about. So one stitch before the gap means that you come to the stitch before the unworked stitches, essentially. And what you're going to do at this point to bridge that gap is you're going to do a slip slip knit again. So you just slip that and you bridge your gap by slipping the other. These are the short rows that we're talking about because you're not working the full row. You knit those together and then you are going to turn your work again. You'll see that you have four unworked stitches now, so you've worked one of those unworked stitches from last time. So you turn the work. And then you slip one purl wise with the yarn in front. And then you purl eight. And again, if you see the instruction, purl to one before the gap, it's the same idea as before. You are just watching for the gap. But in my pattern, it tells you how many stitches to do. Then you're going to purl these two stitches together. And then again, that bridges your gap on this side. And you keep doing that across all of the rows in your heel turn. Essentially, until you work all of the stitches. So in the pattern that you have for me, it'll tell you how many stitches, it'll tell you how many rows to work. And in some patterns, it will tell you until you have worked all of the stitches from the heel flap into the turn. So that's just to be aware that there are different ways in which this is written in different patterns. There's also different shapes of heel turn. Um, so this is a square heel turn. Some of them are round and it depends on what you're doing. But again, your pattern that you're following will tell you. So slipping one purl wise, knitting across the eight stitches, one before the gap. And I am just going to continue now until I'm on the last 
couple of rows of the heel turn and I'll show you what that looks like then. So we've just come to the end, the last row of the heel flap. I'm just going to show you, there's no real difference in how this has worked. So you slip one knit purlwise and you knit across your eight stitches. And once you get to the end, you're going to work the last stitch on the left hand side. So you're going to slip, slip knit. Try not to let your needle run away from you. So you slip, slip knit. And then that has worked the full side of your heel turn. And then you're going to turn the work. And then you're going to slip one purlwise with the yarn in front. And then you're going to purl back across those stitches. And then when you get to that, you're going to find that you have all of the stitches worked as you come to the other side. And then you're just going to purl the two of those stitches together. And that will take you to the end of your heel turn. So you just purl these two together. And that is your heel turn fully worked on your sock wonder. So you can now see square heel. You can see that it goes down the back of your leg into your heel flap, round your turn, and your instep stitches are still the same. And now you're ready to work your gusset pick up tomorrow. Um, we'll show you how to do that as we go. So thank you for watching and we'll be back tomorrow for the gusset pick up.